Hey, he is risen. He is risen indeed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Happy Hallelujah. Easter. And welcome back to the Sunday Serving Channel where you come for gospel victory. So today is Easter Sunday. Mm -hmm. I'm here with my friend Timothy. And um, man, praise God, what the most powerful day of the year to, to think of Jesus, the, the victor over death, over sin, who, who died for us and who God rose from the dead to declare freedom, to declare victory, and to redeem us. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Timothy, what do you think about that? Yeah, this is one of the most special and important days of the year, a day of new life, a day when the power of sin and death is broken. It's worth celebrating. Amen. It yeah. sure is. Yeah. You know, let's take a walk. Here we have our uh, burial ground here in Woodcrest. Yeah, let's do it. And I think it'd be appropriate to walk through mm -hmm. there as we as we talk about this a bit and read some scriptures. Um, the last time on Palm Sunday, we, we talked a little bit about the, the suffering, the crucifixion, Jesus' words on the cross to the thief who said, remember me when you get to paradise mm -hmm. and or remember me in your kingdom, right? Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, truly this day you'll be with me in paradise. And then mm -hmm. of course, the, the death of Jesus. But maybe before we read about the resurrection, What's that, um, it speaks about Jesus' burial and who um, right. helped out with that. I think that's significant. You want to talk about that a bit, TJ? Yeah, so the Gospels tell us that uh, <clears throat> Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus were involved with helping prepare Jesus for burial. And from a, from a historical angle, that's significant because Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus were well-known Pharisees. Nicodemus especially had a reputation. He was one of the three richest men in Jerusalem. And <clears throat> there's an interesting backstory to that because technically when someone dies from capital punishment, when the government killed someone back then, um, there was two places in Jerusalem where they were supposed to be buried. And we know that Jesus was buried in neither of those. Nicodemus took his body Sorry, Joseph of Arimathea took his body and put it in a new tomb that had never been used before. So we think about the, the risks they took as public figures to be connected with this person who had just died a shameful death, the love they showed him to prepare his body for burial when they knew that he didn't have anyone else who could do it. Yeah, it's quite a story. So uh, that, that is amazing. And I've always wondered about these two men Joseph Arimathea, who he was, and it says in John, right, that yeah. he and Nicodemus worked together. Yeah. That's quite something to think that they went to that extent to show their love of Jesus, and they must have been there with the Sanhedrin when Jesus was condemned, and maybe they, do you think they, wrote, they raised their voices to uh, argue against that? Well, that's a good question. I don't know. I mean, there's little details that, that, yeah. that show us that it might not have been the whole Sanhedrin, they might not have been there, but I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, and TJ, you had the uh, <clears throat> the privilege, really, of living two years in Israel and studying, yeah, yeah. studying the gospel and, and biblical history, right? Yeah, reading some of these scriptures yeah. in, in Greek, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, man, I'm kind of envious of you. But hey, <laughs> we shouldn't do that. Today is Resurrection Sunday, and let's read. How about we start with Matthew? Sure, let's do it. Read the resurrection story from Matthew. Let's do it, and we'll go from there. So, Matthew 28. <clears throat> now, after the Sabbath toward the dawn of the first day of the week. That would be Sunday, right? Yeah. After Sabbath. Right. Mary Magdalena and the other Mary went to see the tomb. Now, I always find it remarkable that many of these stories, the most powerful story in the gospel, many others start with women. Mm -hmm. You ever notice that, TJ? Yeah. Here, mm -hmm. Mary of Magdalena. And that was the Mary who Jesus cast out demons, mm -hmm. right? And yep, it says that in Mark's gospel. Changed, changed yeah. her life. Yeah. And the other Mary mm -hmm. went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. Now, so isn't that like the second earthquake mentioned? Because wasn't there an earthquake yes, on Good when Friday. Jesus died yes. on Good Friday? Yes. That tore the, the curtain of the temple yes. from top to bottom. And, yes. and many holy people rose from the dead. Yep. yep. So that must have been a powerful experience yep. and now there's a second earthquake and the angel rolled the stone the big stone away from the tomb yeah it was probably 
the stone is probably about this high. I mean, they've over in Jerusalem, they've gone and dug up yeah. the tombs from the, from that time. From the time was it of, common for them to have a stone? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the door would have been about this high. Yeah. The stone's about this high. It's a, a massive, a massive stone. So, yeah. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. So remember, there were guards placed there because um, I guess the, the chief priests and others had, had gone to the Romans and said, yeah. we're worried the, the disciples will right. steal the body and, right. and say that he rose from the dead. Right. So they set, set guards there. Um, imagine that. So these guards are like lying there dead. Right, right. But... The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus, who is crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, come and see the place where he lay. So Jesus told you he would raise, right? right. He'd be raised from the dead. Right. He is risen. Right. Come, come and see. Here's where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you into Galilee. So that's where... Jesus always retreated to Galilee, right? right That's kind of right. like his home away from home. Right. Or his... Well, even today in, in Israel, you can see why Jesus would have wanted to get out of the city of Jerusalem. Jerusalem must have been a very intense place back then. Especially on a, on a festival right, like that, right? Right, And yeah. then you had all these, all these political movements, the zealots and all that who were creating trouble. And I'm sure he went back to Galilee for the peace, for the people he knew, for the, the nature. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it says, you know, he went before you into Galilee. <clears throat> there you will see him. So the angel saying, go, go to Galilee. There you'll see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy. That's interesting. With fear and great joy. And ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. So again, I mean, how many times did Jesus tell his disciples, Do not be afraid? Quite Here a few. Again, yeah. uh, that's a recurring theme, yeah. do not be afraid. So, Timothy, what, um, what do you... What do you take from that story? I mean, I know, and, and, and also the other Gospels, we don't have time to read all the Gospels. It'd be wonderful, Matt, you know, Mark, Luke, and John. Right. Maybe we can read a little bit. But they, they, tell, it, they tell the same story, but with a, a few little differences. Is there anything you'd yeah. like to add to that uh, the well, resurrection story? Yeah, so I, I like, when I try to understand this story, it helps, of course, to read the Gospels together to see the different details. and. There's interesting, there's interesting aspects of this that come out, for instance, in Luke, where when, when the angel speaks about Jesus' resurrection, he says, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but he has risen. Remember how he told you, while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and on the third day rise. So he, he makes it almost more clear. This is, this is what had to happen, and this is why it had to happen. Yeah, that's powerful. Why do you seek the living among the dead? Yeah. I love that line. And of course, the, um, which gospel has that the foot race between John and Peter, right? It says they, I guess the women went and told the disciples, mm -hmm. and they, it says they, they didn't believe it. Yeah. But John and Peter... One yeah. gospel just says Peter. Yeah, and Luke, I'm, I'm just But then the other Luke one says John says, and Peter had a yeah. race, basically, and, and John kind of brags yeah. a bit, says yeah. the other disciple yeah. outran Peter. Peter yeah. must have been a little older. Yeah. Probably like me and you if we had a race, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, what, what do you... That's a John, right? Yeah, so in Luke it just says that Peter, Peter ran, but in John it says that they both ran. Yeah. And then there's more dialogue yeah. in John between Jesus... And and the women. Do you know? Do you have that there? From yeah, John? I'm just let's, let's read that. Yeah. That, that so. I always find that amazing. Well, I can start with the. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll just start at the beginning of of this is John chapter twenty. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> Verse one. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalena came to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. 
So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter went out with the other disciple, and they were going toward the tomb. Both of them were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying there, and the face cloth, which had been on Jesus' head. Look at that remarkable mm -hmm. detail about That's some detail there. Here. Now, I know there's a lot of controversy yeah. about the Shroud of Turin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Also yeah. evidence that shows that there's something authentic about it. I mean, who right. knows? Right. But, it, but it is amazing, yeah. the detail and how it matches with history. And, and what do yeah. you say that too, is they find more discoveries yeah. archeologically that there's, yep. there's just more and more evidence yep. pointing to the, the authenticity, the realness yeah. of the gospel. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it, it, it surprises me how, especially John's gospel in the story of Holy Week, there's so much detail and he yeah. even uses like technical terms and, and mm. precise language for all of this. And it's also, there's <clears throat> the study of, of human character like you can right. see that you could you could build a picture in your mind of yeah. how peter was how john was peter peter's all heart and then and, and you know yeah. a little impulsive yeah he rushes right in john has a bit more yeah. respect or, or, yeah. or what what's the right word a bit of awe and doesn't yeah. really want to go into that holy space yeah and you know the linen being folded there and the shroud right and um right and then if you go on in john um mm. there's that story where he 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 appears to uh to Mary Magdalena, and and she's basically accusing Jesus. She doesn't realize it's Jesus, and says thinks he's the gardener, right. and says, "Where have you taken him? Tell me so that I can find him." Because right. remember, they wanted to they wanted to embalm or right. to add spices to, right. to right. the body because they hadn't done it because yeah. it was the Sabbath before. Yeah, and then then mm -hmm. then Jesus says, "Mary," and I love yeah. that. Yeah. Again, a one word. Just you could imagine the love, the yeah. warmth in that word, Mary. And it says that Mary looked up and, and recognized him and said, Rabboni, or teacher. Yeah. And then that's, Jesus forbade her to touch her touch him because he said he right. hadn't ascended to the Father yet. Right. And right. Then, um, then when he comes to the disciples, he shows his hands and his feet. Right. And there's one of the disciples that had doubted. Right, Thomas. Thomas, that's, yeah. let's, let's end with that story. Is that, is that in John? Yeah. Do you yeah. have that there? Yeah. Should I, now, Tom okay, okay, you go ahead and read it to you. Sure. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not, with, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. <clears throat> Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Which is interesting because even now, that greeting, peace yeah, be with you, is yeah. a standard greeting. That's what, that's what, that's that's what, what Jesus greeted them, yeah, yeah. greeted the disciples after. Shalom the yeah. peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Hmm. That's, that's an amazing story. Now, imagine that. I could just hear Thomas saying, My Lord and my God. When, when he realized, here was Jesus. It was real flesh and blood. Here are the wounds. Mm -hmm. Why did I doubt? Mm -hmm. can, can you imagine what he must have felt like? So that yeah. I'm sure he felt terrible that he doubted his Lord, my Lord, my God. And then that statement of Jesus to, to us really, blessed are those who have not seen but believe. W what do you think that means? That's a good question. It's of course easier to believe in something as remarkable as a resurrection from the dead if you see the person but there's something there there's something about just 
trusting, I guess. We, we don't obviously see Jesus as a real living mm -hmm. fleshly person, but we see the work of the Holy Spirit all around us. And <coughs> yeah. We know that Jesus is still active today. And yeah, it's a call to faith, you know, and I think faith, faith is that certainty yeah. and that hope for the resurrection, for, right. for the, the victory of God, for the kingdom, for right. Jesus. And it doesn't mean that we should um, discount or neglect evidence or science, right. Right? right? I don't think Jesus is saying that at all. Right. Because there is evidence, but to really believe, you know, right. we don't need to we don't need to see everything with our own eyes. Right. And it's also interesting. We need to open the eyes of our heart, maybe. Yeah. That's what it is. That's what he's saying. Thinking about yeah. John as an old man writing this gospel, yeah. he's writing it for people who never met Jesus. Right. And he's probably also trying to encourage them. He's thinking ahead yeah. about you and me. Yeah. Yeah. And he's saying, Blessed yeah. are you yeah. who believe because this is the truth. Right. I'm the way, the truth, the life, Jesus said. Right. So it's Easter. Jesus is risen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God bless you all. Have a wonderful week. I hope you have a chance to really take this message of, of Christ, of the resurrection in and spread it and live it. And uh, we'll see you next week. We're down here in the beautiful burial ground thinking of the resurrection. You can see the graves of brothers and sisters. This one is freshly decorated with the uh, daffodils, sign of life, a sign of spring. Hallelujah. We're going to walk out this way. I think the kids have this empty tomb there that we can, yeah. we can check out.